According to Adobe, there are 23 million active users of Adobe Creative Cloud, which includes Photoshop and a whole bunch of other products such as Adobe Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere for video editing, After Effects, and other products. But Photoshop probably is one of the most popular things out there in that Creative Cloud suite. So what do those 23 million people do with Photoshop? Well, there might actually be about 23 million different answers out there because Photoshop has so many uses. But let's boil it down to a few basics and I'll share a little bit about how I use Photoshop as well. So one of the most popular things that Photoshop is used for is with photographers to improve their photos. Let's face it, we all probably take pretty bad photos. Even those who are professional photographers want to improve their photographs. So that's what Photoshop really excels at. And I'll show you some examples here in a minute. But it's also used a lot for artistic creations and composite images. So really, I think Photoshop probably is one of the first products, software products out there that became a verb. Did you Photoshop that? Wasn't that Photoshopped? So people recognize the ability of Photoshop to manipulate images. But there's a whole other area of artistic creations, including photorealism, where we can paint images that look like a photograph, but they're really just painted from the, the artist's eye. Composite images is where we take multiple images and put them together to create a new image. That's actually one of my favorite uses of Photoshop. And then while the Adobe Creative Cloud has software such as InDesign for laying out documents and print production documents, Photoshop can be used for that. I do an annual newsletter every year using Photoshop to lay everything out. Things like business cards and flyers and brochures I often create in Photoshop. And what I mentioned in the previous video that one of the things I do is teach software development and mobile app programming. And a lot of that's very visual these days. So I use Photoshop a lot for web and software development support to create the graphics that I want to put in a mobile app or in a software package. I also use Photoshop sometimes for creating the user interface of that software to, to create really nice buttons that the user clicks on. I use Photoshop a lot for educational materials. My master's is in educational media and computers. And so developing materials such as infographics that can help people learn are one of the ways that I use Photoshop as well. Now I create a lot of instructional videos such as this and I use Photoshop to create my title screens, my lower thirds, and various support images where I'm explaining a concept to do that visually. Now, there's so many industries that make use of Photoshop. You think about realtors who want to display images of the houses they have have on the market. Again, kind of goes back to the photography improvements, but let's make that house look as best as we can by modifying the tone and the quality of those images. Not necessarily putting things that are there that aren't there, taking things away, but really putting a shining uh, a nice fresh light on the house and the rooms that it contains. Law enforcement uses Photoshop and digital forensics to zoom in on a picture or perhaps enhance a photograph. In 1992, I was overseeing a computer lab for faculty at Arizona State University. Many faculty at the time didn't have computers in their offices and they certainly didn't have the high-end software such as Photoshop. So we made that available to them in the lab. There weren't a lot of copies of Photoshop floating around those days. This was the early stages and in walked two Tempe police detectives who had a photograph of a man at an ATM that only had part of his face. He'd kind of stayed out of the range of the camera. And this man had abducted a woman uh, and taken her to an ATM, forcing her to take out money before killing her. And they wanted to know if we could take that face and duplicate it and create what would probably be the other side of his face. And we were able to do that. The killer was eventually caught. I don't know if our work in Photoshop helped make that happen, but we had an opportunity to participate in the capture of a murderer. So one of the most popular uses of Photoshop, again, was to improve photographs. Today, Adobe has another product called Lightroom, and that's what a lot of photographers use, maybe along with Photoshop. But Lightroom sort of combines Photoshop and Adobe Bridge, allowing more file management to be done. But you can still do everything in Photoshop in terms of improving photos. So here's a photo that I took that is obviously very underexposed. But through the magic of Photoshop, we can modify the exposure and enhance the tonality of that image. 
and get something that's much more clear and a worthwhile photo. In the same way, we can take a file that is overexposed and let Photoshop work its magic and redeem the tonal quality of that image. Now this looks like a nice photo, but it actually has a little bit of a greenish yellowish cast to it, a tint, which is pretty common taking indoor photos, either from a flash or from different types of lighting inside the house. And it took all of about maybe a minute to improve the quality of that photo just by getting rid of that tinted cast that was, was a result of my camera. Now here's an image I took in Tombstone, Arizona of an actor portraying Doc Holliday. Not a bad photo, but you see that the, the street scene is kind of overexposed and Doc Holliday is somewhat in the shadows, maybe a little bit underexposed. I want to improve that. And so in this case, I want to modify both the underexposure and the overexposure to get a much better image. That looks pretty good. Still, there's some things in this photo that I don't like. One is the tourist walking behind here, and you can tell this is not a period piece. This is a modern day photo, as well as this sign that says gunfight at OK Corral. One of the things we often use in Photoshop is to remove artifacts, select them, get rid of them. I'm going to get rid of the sign, and we can also apply a sepia tone to make it look like it's an old time photograph. Here's an image of a friend of mine dancing with his daughter at her wedding and asked me if I could do something with this photo. I don't know what this object was in the upper left, but it's definitely distracting, and asked if I could focus on that with the lighting situation. So that's what I did, kind of blurring out the background, enhancing the lighting, and getting rid of that strange structure in the upper left-hand corner. Here's a photo I took a number of years ago after they bulldozed my high school. This is simply the empty lot. But one of the things you learn in with photography is always make sure your horizon is level and anything that is perpendicular should be straight. So you see here the horizon is not level and the posts here are not straight. But the good thing is in Photoshop I can improve that. I can make the horizon level. I can straighten those posts for the most part and enhance this overexposed image in the process. Most of us as amateurs shooting with a digital camera take our image and allow the camera to process the image and create a JPEG image. But professionals tend not to use JPEGs. Professionals use a raw setting on their camera where the camera is simply capturing all the information and creating a raw image that then is processed in Photoshop. It creates much larger files, but it gives the photographer much more control in terms of the processing and ultimately the artistic ability with that photo. So here's a camera raw photo that's unprocessed. Most photographers probably do this in Lightroom, but in Photoshop we can also bring it in and do the processing in Photoshop. And we can set the tonal quality, the exposure, all kinds of attributes of that photo that we have control over rather than letting our camera do it for us. A camera lens doesn't really see a scene as well as our eyes do. Our eyes allow us to peer into the shadows that the camera cannot capture that information. Though photographers have tried to, to simulate that through something called high dynamic range. And we take multiple exposures of the same shot using a tripod so everything is exactly the same. And then in Lightroom or Photoshop combine those photos to get what we call an HDR, high dynamic range image that gives us the best of all exposures. You know, with high dynamic range, I've seen some pretty cool surreal effects from combining these different exposures by various photo artists. We can also do photo restoration with Adobe Photoshop. This is an image of my wife as a young child with her older brother, very faded, a little bit of damage to the photo. But with Photoshop, I was able to restore much of that photo. Here's another one of her grandparents with a photo that was very heavily damaged, lots of creases, very faded, very yellowed. But again, with Photoshop, we can bring some of that back. I did a calendar of my dog Reba many years ago. And so for November, of course, I had her featured with the Thanksgiving turkey. It took a while to convince my mother that no, my dog was not about to grab the turkey off the table because this is a composite image. I simply combined a whole bunch of images to produce that image. That is a composite. And these are really fun to do, I think. You can be very artistic in the process. 
So I used a lot of photo clip art, picture of my dog, picture of the island in my kitchen, and combined all that together. And here again then was the finished product. Here's another composite I recently did of that same Rottweiler over here on the right and my current Rottweiler on the left, Serenity Grace and Reba. And I just want to do something kind of fun with the two of them. They've never been together. Reba passed before we had Serenity, but I want to bring those images together and just do something kind of fun with them. So here then are the images that I used. My two Rotties, waterfall, gorilla, an octopus, a beach ball, a shark, and a teddy bear. And again, there was the final composite. Here's another composite of my early days of learning Photoshop. I took a forest scene with a moon rock, a fishing lure, and a largemouth bass photo clip art image and combined those to create this advertisement. This image of my dog was actually shot in the backyard. I selected her out, added in the wood grain for the stage, some photo clip art of a stool, photo clip art of a water bowl and a microphone, and then created her name in lights and added some lighting effects. Put her inside of a snow globe. An image of her looking over her shoulder, added a lunch pail and added a photo of some desk, a chalkboard and a door and drew everything else. Composite of Serenity Grace. Another one of her, I, I used the puppet warp of Photoshop to add the mask over her nose and then composite her into a hospital scene. Add a bistro. So I'm going to do composites to put a couple photos together to show things off better. So um, Serenity was a therapy dog, Phoenix Children's Hospital. And they have what's called the wall of woof. All the dogs that participate at the hospital are featured on a wall. So I took her picture, but I wanted to also get a close-up of her in the image and so I put that as an insert. I've been in awe of a photorealism artist named Burt Monroy who creates these incredible paintings that can sometimes take a couple years to create that are extremely detailed, look like a photograph, but they're all drawn in Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop. So I wanted to play around with some of that. So this is my attempt at drawing a stapler, creating a GPS, old style GPS. Again, this is many years ago and creating a candy bar. And this is from a workshop that I attended at Photoshop World, a workshop by Felix Nelson showing how to create a candy bar from scratch in Photoshop. And I then taught that technique to several of my Photoshop classes uh, back in 2004. Photoshop has a whole wide range of brushes and you can create your own brushes. So there are people who use Photoshop to do digital painting. We can also add text. So creating memes are really easy in Photoshop. We can add text to a photo, create postcards, create maybe slides for a PowerPoint presentation, all by adding text and very special effects. We can even have text follow a circular path. And this is a composite of some popcorn and people to theater. I added a tint to it and added some text for one of my classes at South Mountain Community College. As I said, we can do layout. Adobe InDesign is probably the more appropriate product to do doing layout, but this was a basically a framed photo that you saw earlier that I did with some text of the song that they danced to. This was an advertisement I did, again, kind of dating with the flip phone, but adding text to an image. This is a composite of several images together. Notice that the going from black and white to color on this image, really easy to do with something called masking in Photoshop. And I mentioned that my wife and I do an annual newsletter every year. I tend to lay that out in Photoshop partially because that's what I'm most comfortable in, more so than in design. But because they're usually heavily in graphics, it just makes it really easy for me to create the newsletters, print those out, and then mail them out. My Rottweiler is a therapy dog, and we would do work out in the community where I would give away these trading cards to people we visited. And I created these in Photoshop laying everything out and sending them to a printer and have them printed by basically a thousand at a time. We gave out a couple thousand of these over the last several years. We can create coloring books with Photoshop or comic books. So comic artists oftentimes draw in Illustrator and then paint in Photoshop. We can also create sprites. So going back to the idea of creating support images for, for websites and mobile app and software, we can create sprites. And Photoshop actually has the ability to do some animation and video work. So this is an animated GIF creating, created in Photoshop. 
I drew the figures in an old version of Adobe Flash, which now is Adobe Animate, and imported them into Photoshop just to demonstrate that yes, we could create animation in Photoshop. So there you have it, just a little survey of how Photoshop might be used and things that I've used Photoshop for. I hope I've inspired you to continue on with the journey. If you'd like to see more videos in the Photoshop Practicum playlist, click the title at the bottom. If you'd like to be alerted to new videos, please click my photo in the top right to subscribe to the channel.